Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a very sunny San Diego today. And I am delighted to be joined from Chicago, the windy city, by Govin Balu. How are you doing, Govin? Thank you so much. I'm doing well. <laughs> How are Excellent. you? Good, good. And Govin is a visionary entrepreneur and experienced executive with strong background in leveraging data and AI to drive business growth across multiple industries. And he's the founder and CEO of QX or Qua Sigma. Uh, and he spearheads the company's vision to transform organizations into data-driven enterprises. Uh, you're also serving as interim chief digital officer at Roadside Project, overseeing technology, strategy, data strategy, IT capabilities. And what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about today is digital transformation, but digital transformation with a particular emphasis on AI and how AI is impacting sales and marketing, sales in particular. So Echo, just to kick off, um, can you just define for people what digital transformation is? Because it's a term that's been thrown around it, and I still think some people do not understand what it really means. <laughs> you know, I, I will try my level best. I think uh, uh, it's a relatively new term. Uh, uh, the a, a one the simplest way of the looking at change the way you do the business using a newer digital technologies. I think which you kind of talked about what is the combination of digital technologies is the data, AI, some of the latest digital online technologies. You can looking at a mobile app or a, a Android apps or a, a things that nature. But I think the core focus of when the businesses talk about the change they like to introduce and the first and foremost question i have been always emphasizing it why do you need that change now mm. what is making that change a you wanted to introduce a do you have the people in the organization that are aligned to the change you are you wanted to use and they, did they buy in mm -hmm. And do you know the value of trying to achieve out of that change is very, very important. I think, the, you know, to just summarize the, you introduce the, the change, new way of doing the business. That's what the digital transformation, I think, the, my view. Yeah. And, yeah. and what, one of the things that I just wanted to also ask you about is what we feel is a lot of organizations, you know, they hear about digital transformation. They start to, they start to try and implement some of the, but they're basing it on kind of analog thinking, if you like, and even analog processes and and kind of old style thinking. And and so I think, uh, and I would ask your opinion on this, do you think digital transformation, you can't do that unless you start to change your whole kind of philosophy approach, if you like, get out of analog thinking? Correct. I think it's, uh, if you have seen or watching a video, so it's called the design thinking. Because the design thinking always we have a traditional way of thinking, traditional way of solving the problem, which is more of a uh, talking to the domain expert. Hey, I have this problem. What's your opinion is, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can go back to the people and asking for what type of business rules I need to apply or a change the way I have been doing it. That's called analog thinking and traditional thinking. Now, the new way of thinking is you need to make sure that your data is really empowering the change. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the digital transformation is. You are not really quote unquote uh, going to an expert and asking, what should I do? Expert is going to tell you, go back and implement that change. That's an awesome. Again, I'm not saying that not important, but you need to do the both. But you really need to rely on the data to tell you what change you need to introduce uh, into the in the in the change. Mm -hmm. So that's called the new way of thinking. When you have the new way of thinking, which is the digital way of thinking, first and foremost, you need to understand your data. Mm -hmm. and what is data is telling you? And they, is the data is truly telling you, you really need this change now? Or you wanted to hold on to the change uh, uh, some more time? 
Mm -hmm. um, so th that's what I'm, th I would say. Analog thinking is much more traditional thinking, going to domain experts, talking to them, taking their guidance and implementing that change. And the new uh, thinking is really empowering your decision making through the data driven decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so basically, obviously, we've been talking about digital transformation f for a while now, like for a number of years, and some people have been early adopters and other people have been kind of sitting on the sidelines. Um, but I think now with the explosion of AI, it's kind of brought it front and center. So can you give me a briefly explain how you see how AI has really been changing companies in the landscape, you know, particularly in sales and marketing? But I think AI has kind of forced digital transformation on a lot of people. Absolutely. I think there is a miss. Uh, the conception definition of the AI, you know, AI is nothing but a, a true automation. So if you go back to the your, your point of the analog thinking, a traditional thinking, a lot of the legacy systems built with the pre-set uh, up rules. You know, I go, go back and uh, define the business rules. You, you can look at the much more technical terms is the hard coding business rules. What the AI is looking at when you feed the data to the AI, the AI looks at the data, try to come out with the dynamic business rules, which is nothing but an automation. So mm -hmm. you a really using the AI to enable your digital transformation. So looking at the two ingredients for a digital transformation, a success, I would say three, you need to understand the, what problem you're trying to solve. Then mm -hmm. the question go back to why are you trying to solve it right now? And the second ingredient, you need to understand absolutely critical input to use the, your data. And the third component, you need to feed the data to AI. AI is gonna do the a recommendation, a what you really need to do that. Those recommendations are really automating. Let me give you a very specific yeah. example, okay? You know, when I was working at uh, Allstate as a chief digital officer, a chief data officer, and one of the a products or services we offer, road trade services, which is, which is uh, which again, I'm working as a digital officer for another road trade company in Chicago also. So if you're looking at in that road trade business, traditionally is a call center driven. So if, if you broke down on the road, you reach out to the a the uh, call center, okay, I need a, I need someone to come and help me out. So it takes time, mm -hmm. anxiety. You, you broke down on the middle of the road. If you have, a, you know, snowing, you don't want to sit there and waiting for a provider to show up. So what we have done, very creative, I think it's an article came out on the uh, Forbes too, we call the Uber Roadside Rescue. We build an app, mobile app, the moment you broke down on the road, you simply click the button, I need help. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's all you need to do. So what that does, it recognizes you who you are, John, where you broke down, what vehicles you were driving, and what is that you are needing, and what type of situation you are in. So it literally analyzes it, your entire uh, situation in a moment of time, it recommends you, we will send you someone within within a few minutes. So it identifies the right person to go back and rescue you. And it gets you gets you to the right service, the right time, and a, a what exactly you need to a rescue for. So the traditionally that entire process, you know, your definition of the analog, analog way of doing it, it took close to a 60 to 75 minutes to a rescue, at least to get you the help. Right. With the a digital transformation, we are able to bring it down to 25 to 35 minutes range. So you're looking at almost half of the time, we brought it down. You can you can looking at the customer's perspective. You are very happy to see it now someone is risking you within 60 sometimes the providers may not even show up mm -hmm. with the digital transformation you're really being rescued you will know exactly when the provider is going to show up and who is going to show up everything is done with the 
with the click up button that's called what you call end to end digital transformation mm -hmm. so in this case there is a real need why we need to do the digital transformation yeah, I mean, that's a great example because, I mean, it takes the, you know, because let's face it, what's the biggest stressor when you're broken down or something like that is, is when is somebody going to rescue me, right? <laughs> and if you have insight into that. And what it also means, again, Govan, what, I, what I'd like to get your insight into as well is you know, a lot of people fear AI and think, oh, no, AI is going to take over everything. But just in the example that you said there, what that means is, you can service the customer faster, but it means you can focus on the service, right? You can make sure you've got the best service uh, and and you really focus on that as opposed to a communications chain that may break down. Absolutely. Put yourself in the receiving side, John. I think let's say you are the customer, you broke down on the road. Don't you want someone to come and help you within 30 minutes? You wanted to wait to 75 minutes? Right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that, right? I think the, you know, as much as we all scared of, you know, AI is going to take care of, if you're looking at, there are significant problems. The human capacity or human force is not enough to solve the problem to make a better place for mm -hmm. living. Okay. And I'm using a roadside service as an example sure. here, right? So, and even go back to a uh, uh, pandemic how many people we cannot go out and get mm. the food how many people relied on a the apps to deliver food apps to deliver a grocery services right i think it's need is the one which is really a a uh, forcing us to optimize the way we live optimize the way we need to do the business right mm -hmm. there's a lot of problems that you know we have an opportunity is to solve it, okay? And as much as we are a fear of losing our jobs, I think in my perspective of next 10 years, AI is kind of optimizing, making a human living is better than taking out my jobs. That's absolutely my view, okay? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I work with a lot of small to medium-sized companies, John. I can tell you, the capacity labor they have is nearly a, enough for them to serve their customers. In that case, they're not they, they cannot go back and hire a, yep. you know millions of people to serve the business. They have to look at optimizing their business, right? That's yeah. the only way they can stay in the business. Yeah. No, yeah. I I I and I agree with you. And I think uh, and if we take sales as a as a great example. There's a lot of routine and rote uh, manual tasks that salespeople, sales organizations normally have to do that now with automation and AI can be taken care of. And that way you can actually focus on being a better salesperson, on the relationship, on the parts that AI can't do. And that's why I think it's actually a great, it, it has great potential to actually allow you to focus on the things that you are good at, you as a human being are good at, and what people crave too. Absolutely. Let me give you another example, John. And I don't want to name the universities. Sure. There are top 10 universities. Their goal was to raise the funds. Okay, they have tons of salespeople that are calling and they call the call center people that you want to want to call mm -hmm. the, a, a salespeople. They need to call, pick the phone and call the a prospects. They call the donors. Mm -hmm. and ask the donors to a uh, fund the money okay they have millions of alumni members then nearly not even one person two percent they're able to reach the people to ask the donors and prospect to uh, share the share the uh, donations what the ai helped in fact we build the solutions okay we're looking at their al alumni members and we look at who those are what time those people need to be reached so that you are not getting bothered and we literally identify the right people to reach out the right time when we reach out to right amount to ask you have less likely to refuse it that entire sales process we fully automated it so let's say you and me are in the sales mm -hmm. right now i know precisely what time i should call whom should i call even if i call someone else how much money i need to ask we the 
three times we increase their pledge amount, their donations. Okay, so looking at even the sales, uh, you know, typical sales and retail sales, right? I grew up in the retail sales this week and I worked at the CVS. Uh, uh, one of the uh, strategies we implemented at the 8,000 CVS stores, we created a personalized experience from the sales perspective. When you walk in, who you are, what products you have been purchasing, how often you are coming into the store, what likely you may be purchasing other than your routine products mm -hmm. we have created that entire experience through the ai okay but uh, in we did not we did not even cut down the labor we still need a right. people in the a store when you walk in walking in you need someone to help you. even you know to be honest with you when you walk into the lows when you walk into the home depot you barely can find a people to help us <laughs> what, what you need you know, you end up wasting, to, and I'm not kidding. Yeah. When I went to the last week, I was looking at aisle to aisle. I yeah. could not find a one person who could help me where I can find the items. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there's yeah. those those are such huge opportunities for for organizations, you know, for companies like that, like Home Depot, um, to leverage this because, as you said. I mean, it's not even redu it's not even reducing labor. It's the fact. I mean, they have plenty of labor right now. They're just really busy, right? And uh, and you know, one person's question could take them half an hour, right? Uh, so therefore, and there are you who just needs guidance to find things. So I, I absolutely think that AI can help with the whole customer experience and and augment the human. I think mean, that's the thing. And I think that's where people are missing out, that it can be a fantastic augmentation to the human element, but it can actually make the human element better because you can focus. I think that you're absolutely correct. I think that's where I think a lot of organizations, they need to start with the what is the number one problem it's important for them mm -hmm. can the change be brought in by the a people they work with in the organization so when i go back and try to implement the change without taking the people along with you yeah. then you are going to lose the confidence no one is going to no one is going to go back and uh, even use that uh, uh, change that, that's what mm -hmm. i think the problem is it's always i think your first question start with uh, okay what is the digital transformation? Yeah. Digital transformation is nothing but a change you like to introduce in the organization. And the first and foremost, did your organization buy into that change? If it is not, you cannot do anything with that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and I think, uh, and and I think it's uh, what you highlighted is it a, a good place to start is friction points, right? You know, especially from a customer point of view. There's a fantastic friction point. You went into Home Depot, nobody there to help you. You went from, you probably went there quite excited to get whatever you wanted to do because you have some project on. And now you've gone from being excited to being frustrated, right? So there's a friction point. And I think that's it. That's always the best places to start is the friction points, right? Correct. So the pain point, I called my opinion is the pain point. What is your pain point, right? First, you know, you got to take care of your customers, the way a customer is engaging it, the key, the how you are responding to a customer, the way you are a serving your customers, all that can be better served today. Okay, mm -hmm. so I can tell you another example. I was working with uh, one of the top cable companies to just uh, add the TV services. They sold one thing. Two days back when I called them, they don't even remember. I I even called, even they charged my credit card. They charged my credit card. They don't have in the record in the system, right? So if you had the, the good data collected and if their system is smart enough, okay, we collected the, the you know, payment from the GoVin. We did not really add the service to the GoVin that could have been a wonderful experience, right? <laughs> and you can imagine if the people sitting there looking at when did go, we collect the payment, is Govin services added, when that added, if someone has to do the manual checks, 10 checks, is that humanly possible? Yeah, no, no. It's not humanly possible. I think that's what we do. Yeah, that's what you need to look at. First thing, understand your pain point. Understand why you like the change. 
a lot of times every business you go particularly small to medium sized company job mm -hmm. there are huge opportunities for the small to medium sized company to leverage ai to be very competitive in the market yeah i yeah. i think i think it's a great equalizer in many ways especially i think if you look at the landscape of business today that you can set up a business you can leverage um you know saas uh, obviously you can leverage ai you can leverage upwork for contract workers around the globe where you there's so many if you're smart about it i mean there's so many ways to start and scale a business um in a way that you never could before that's exactly right that's exactly right i think the a uh one a important thing I think I would I wanted to call out the digital transformation. So when we build a technology, digital transformation, you are optimizing your current process. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people don't understand even, right? I think I use the, yeah. this analogy a lot, right? When I, I my kid needs to go to school every morning, he needs to get up at six o'clock, right? Take shower, take bus, go to the classroom, right? That's a process. He has to pull. Let's say he's getting uh, school late. I'm giving an example. Every day is yeah. getting. So in that four steps, there is an optimization. Okay, maybe you should not be taking the bus. Buses are delaying him. Maybe we need to we need to have a you know exclusive driver dropping him, or maybe he needs to start early. Mm -hmm. you now the six o'clock is not enough. He may need to start at five o'clock. Right, that process flow. <laughs> need to be laid out before we start introducing the digital transformation yeah. in that process can i just take my example no you're letting you're getting up late you need to start five o'clock now the mm. change what we are trying to introduce is getting to the school late that's your symptom what yeah. is the change i'm trying to introduce instead of going starting at six o'clock now we are going to wake up at five o'clock that's a simple business is as simple as that john i think a lot of a lot of us make things complicated yeah. you know well, I, it, it needs to be a very simple process in my opinion I, I i totally agree with you and i think the other danger is um mm -hmm. as you said is people just automating or digitizing processes that it currently exist without looking like without looking is it a good process? Is it an efficient process? Does it work? Can I can I optimize the process before I even want even like automate it or digitize it? Because I think that's where what happens if you automate a, a bad process, what do you you've got? An automated bad process. <laughs> that's exactly right. In, in, in the in the scenario of my kid, okay, I may say, okay, he's gonna wake up at five o'clock. If I'm gonna let him not gonna let him know, he's the one who needs to adopt that process, right? You know, if I did not tell <laughs> <laughs> you know, tomorrow the exactly. people are the people are the people the uh, employees of the in the organization. They are going to adopt the new process. That's why I think the change needs to be discussed, aligned, and introduced in a proper way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks, Govan. This has been fantastic. All of Govan's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. You know, a. Three decades, I spent many, many years with uh, data and AI space. Uh, I think uh, uh, Bank of America, CVS, Allstate, I think those are the, some of the examples uh, uh, you know, I have been using uh, during this podcast. Uh, I started my startup journey last four years uh, 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 under uh, QX. One main reason I think as I continue to sit and uh, make my heart is with the small to medium sales mm -hmm. companies they need help okay uh, not that they don't know how to do it they have limited resources my goal is to offer a help with the data and ai to enable digital transformation so yeah. that's what i'm here you know one thing i want i've been i'm not here in making the money i'm here to a, make an impact to the small to medium sized companies we have been amazing doing that i have a little bit more longer to go and if they like to find out and learn more about what we do, they can look it up on a LinkedIn by typing govin.palu or they can go to our website, quasigma.com. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And as I said, all those links will, will be below here. But yeah, listen, great. Fantastic yeah. talking to you, Govan. I think it's a noble thing. I think any successful country or economy has a very robust, small and medium sized business. You know, people often think, oh, big mega corporations. No, it's small and medium businesses that actually make an economy really tick at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. So um, thanks again, Govan. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you. Okay, bye now.